Welcome to part 7 of my tutorial series on modeling a clock in Maya. The reason we're in Adobe Photoshop right now is because we are texturing said clock. So let's le begin where we left off. Our clock is in desperate need of numbers. So to do that, I'm going to create some guides. Not guide rulers, but instead I'm going to be using the layers I've already created and create a little sort of a system of ensuring the alignment of the text as it goes around the sphere circle. So to begin with I'm going to grab layer 2 and duplicate it. This is inside that group we created and then drag it outside of the group in turn ungrouping it. The other layer I want to duplicate and move out of the group is layer 3. So select that layer and repeat duplicating it. Drag it out of the group. Okay, now we're good to go. We can just minimize this group. And I will also want to move layer 3 above our layer 2 copy. Also on layer 3, I will be right clicking and clicking clear layer style. It will get rid of all of the layer adjustments we did. They won't be necessary. The other thing I want to do on layer 2 actually is right click, go to blending options, and change the stroke color to something that will show up better. In this case I think I'll select a bright blue or something. Okay, so now we have these red and bright blue lines on our clock. They won't stay there. They are the guides I was talking to you about. So the first thing I'm going to do is scale the blue line so it meets the offset of the text from the rim. I'm going to Adobe Photoshop's scale function, edit transform scale, and I'll be scaling it by 94%. I once again click the Maintain Aspect Ratio button. Now that I'm done with that, I can press the checkbox. Well, in this case, I just changed to a different tool. And now for layer 3, I will also be scaling it. Check that. Just bring it to about the same size as our blue line. This doesn't need to be 100% accurate, it should just be eyeballed. So now, we will be lining up our numbers so, they e so their edges touch the blue line and they'll be in line with the red lines as they go around our circle. So let's begin with our text tool. And the font I'm using is Times New Roman and it's set to regular and the font size will be 330 pixels. And we'll start with 12. So just click anywhere on your document and then type on your keyboard 12. Oh, also the text has been set to center. Now that that's done, I'm going to the Move tool. It's on this toolbox over here and I'm going to make sure I've turned snap off. Now it may sound like a good idea to have snap on right now but we're going to be turning it off for the initial positioning of the text. It will actually get in the way for that process. So I will just eyeball 12 to the center, to the center. There we go, take a look. And now we will duplicate the 12 layer. Move it to the right. Remove the two. And now we're on to one. We're also going to uncheck show transforms transform controls on the move tool. Makes it a little easier to move. Line it up. Like I said, we want it in line so its edges will touch the blue line, but it's still in line with the red one. Right about there it looks right layer, duplicate, and we'll just continue our way 
around should be at least in theory sitting exactly halfway four we're just toggling back and forth between the move tool and I'm not sure if the video recorder will pick this up but when you see the purple guidelines pop up when you're directly underneath the one and creating five that's a good thing because we want one and five perfectly in line with each other because as you see they're supposed to be perpendicular no not perpendicular vertically in line with each other the same should be for two and four right now it's a bit off but I'll go back and get that Seven should be aligned with five. Eight with four. Nine should be once again in the middle, same as three. N Ten should be aligned with eight and one. Excuse me, two. And lastly, 11, which should be aligned with 1. So here is where we want to turn on snap and slowly try and align all these layers to each other because if they're all in line to each other, then that means they should be in theory perfectly lined up. I'm going to adjust to 10 now and get a little better aligned with 2. It doesn't need to be 100% but we should try and get it as close as possible. I believe 3 and 9 are pretty good already as it stands. We're just trying to basically use a snap tool to help in line all of them to each other. I believe that's now pretty good. There we go. Six. Snap that to the center. Twelve, you might notice, is a little off-center. That's intentional. It just reads better that way. Seven aligned with five and eleven. Eight needs to be in line with four. It's already pretty good. So that's it for alignment. And now I'm going to delete our guide layers. Actually, I think I'll leave them. I'll just make them invisible by unchecking the visibility. So the next thing I'll be doing is adding this text, and we'll be done. This text, I believe, was Arial. 39 pixels that was centered. Type it in. Cap lock should be on. Let me zoom in. I can barely see what I'm typing. Complete. 
switch over to the to the move tool and try and line it with the bottom of the eight. Which actually now that I look at this, nope, that's actually that's in line. You want to line it so the top of quartz is in line with the bottom of your eight. I think 8 and 4 are a little low, so I'm going to move them up a bit more. I said I'll remake our guides visible. Good thing I didn't delete those. I think they need to be yeah, just slightly too high. Let me turn off snap so I can position the 8. I want its edge right about there. I think 10 is also too high upon looking at this closer. It's really hard to get this right on the first shot. So I've lined 4 with 8, so now they're pretty close to each other. And now 10 looks way off. I think I'll lower 10 and 2. Move 10 to there. So... Can't really 100% align with 8 due to its width, but we'll try and get close. Well, we will also be moving 2. So now that in lines with 10. A little too far over. There we go. Now I can hide them. So that looks pretty good to me. And now all that's left is saving a file. And we're now done texturing our clock face. The next part of this series will be assigning the texture to the clock.